This is the Premier League, right? The best league in the world. And you've got officials like that. Anthony Taylor was an absolute shambles at Old Trafford. Manchester United drawing 0-0 there with Southampton. Honestly, that's one of the toughest games you're going to watch for United this season. It was horrible. For 60 minutes, we played with 10 men. We held on. We were resilient. Yes. And there are some things to take from that game. But just an absolute disgrace of a performance from Anthony Taylor in the middle. Starting with the red card for Casemiro. Casemiro gets the ball first. His foot bounces off the ball, goes onto his shin. If you look at, if you isolate that situation from a VAR perspective, you look at one frame, it looks like a red card. But it's not a red card. I don't expect Manchester United to appeal it because of, I just don't think they will. Personal, personal opinion. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments. But it wasn't a red card. And it, it just seemed like he just, the referee, Anthony Taylor, just tried to outdo himself as the half continued. Fernandez there, the ball was between, no, Fernandez's body was between the ball and Walker Peters. Walker Peters went through Fernandez, got the ball cleanly. No, he didn't. He got Fernandez first. It was a stonewall penalty. And it wasn't even the most stonewall penalty of all. Look at Anthony Taylor's line of sight there. What's he? Less than 15 yards away. Nobody in the way. The ball hits his arm. If his arm isn't there, it goes straight to the feet of Veghorst. That is as stonewall a penalty as you're ever going to see. And I don't even think that to, I don't even think that went to VAR. I might be wrong on that, so I can't confirm that. But what an absolute shambles of a performance. It was a game where the refereeing decisions completely dictated the whole tempo of the game, the whole structure of the game, and it forced United to play with 10 men. And look, that now means Casemiro's banned for four games, by the way. Casemiro, who never had a red card in his entire career, has now missed, I believe, will have missed, seven, eight games through suspension this season. My word. Felt sorry for him. He looked, I think, I, I, did he start crying on the pitch? He was on the verge of it. It was a joke. It was a joke. Now, Eric Ten Hag won't be able to, or maybe he will. Uh, but I don't think he will because he'll just get banned. He'll just get a fine from the FA. How about you find your own referees? Honestly, a total shambles. And it's hard not to focus on it because that, as I said, dictated the entire rest of that game. It was a hard watch. Manchester United were up against it for 60 minutes. We had chances. Southampton had a ton of chances. Ah, oh, that one where Bazunu made a little finger, teeny, literally the tip of his finger to stop Bruno from scoring, putting it onto the post. Oh. Look, Southampton were what? Joint, were they joint bottom of the Premier League going into the game? I can't remember where they were or not. But Eric Ten Hag will be both furious with that referee I'm furious with the decisions that went against Manchester United. But he will also be happy about the resilience that United showed in that game. Because we've mentioned that quite a few times. That was a game where we really needed our defence. I think overall, we had both Southampton and United had four shots on target each. James Ward-Prowse, every time he stood over a free kick, I was like, please. He didn't score, clipped the crossbar with one. But Martinez, I think in particular was very good today from a defensive perspective. I thought Luke Shaw was that... Uh, Martinez was better than Luke Shaw was. And I tell you, I have to credit Scott McTominay. I think when Scott McTominay came on for... Uh, unlucky for Veg Horses, what happens when you get a red card? There's going to be somebody that goes off and gets their game ruined because, hmm, I don't know, because the referee decided to ruin the game. But that was um, about Veg Horses. McTominay came on, and now we're going to be looking to you, McTominay, to find that form that you had... For those four games after Brentford, when it was Liverpool and Arsenal and you played and you played very well, we're going to need that because Casemiro, as I said, is going to be suspended for four games. Now, do you think I'm being unfair? Is this red tinted specs? Because I don't think it is. His foot bounces up off the ball. It's just so harsh and I can't get over that. that that's, that's probably the worst one of the lot. I think you can, you can argue... All day long about that red card. Now, again, maybe I'm looking at it from a red tinted specs perspective, but that is just his arm is right there. It's it hits his arm. 
it doesn't go to their course because it hits his arm. And because it's nil-nil, you have to... It's happened so often this season, not just with Manchester United. I guarantee you fans of every single Premier League club can, can and I suppose it's the same every single season. Maybe I'm going slightly overboard, but I don't think I am. From that, that, that game there with two stonewall penalties and that red card to Casemiro, it was a game where United didn't have any lucky breaks in that game at all. I'm not sure if you felt that. Like Every time the ball bounced off someone, it went to Southampton. Every t It was just... It was a horrible game to watch. And I tell you what, Eric Ten Hag, with 20 minutes to go, we've got 10 men. What does he do? He brings on Pellistri and Garnacho. Now, fingers crossed. That was a good tackle by Walker's P Walker Pete. I felt it was a good tackle anyway. Um, on Garnacho, but he trapped his ankle between his two legs. Garnacho went down in some serious pain. I think he probably should have gone off at that point, but he came back on and eventually was taken off for Fred. Uh, but it was a very, very positive sub from Eric Ten Hag. And I was thinking about it before the game. When was the last time you heard United fans chanting, attack, 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 attack? Because that, that game there is the first time in, I think, 16 games at home at Old Trafford where we haven't scored two or more. And obviously we had the red card, but it's changed it completely. But in the last 20 minutes now, unfortunately, we weren't really able to get the ball to either of them that much. And we weren't really able to create too many opportunities towards the end there. One thing I would say uh, from uh, the perspective of Bruno, rather than the ref here, I don't particularly think I like Bruno playing in that deeper role. How often this season now are we going to see Bruno playing in different positions? Play Bruno. Uh, Bruno is the number 10. That's his best role. Uh, well, whether it's a number 10 or whether it's part of a midfield three, but it, I suppose we effectively went to a midfield uh, pivot. Effectively, it was a 4 4 1, wasn't it? With Sancho operating as the isolated number nine, number 10, hybrid. But Bruno deeper, those sorts of passes, there was quite a, a couple of them today for sure. Bruno just like the touch was wrong or the pass was a bit iffy. And then when he's playing in deeper positions, it can cause serious issues. Luckily, it didn't today. But he was a, ah, oh man, that, that cross from Bruno to Varane in the first half. That shot from Bruno, Bruno was at the center of all of our biggest opportunities today, whether it was his shot, whether it was his cross to um, Varane, and there was another one as well. I think it was through to, right at the start, in the, in the first 10, 15 minutes, it, the, the shape of the team felt a bit odd. And I think it was Bruno through to Rashford. I think that was a chance that Bruno through to Sancho. I think it was to Rashford. Then Rashford could have squared it to their course, but it was a little bit blocked. And there was another one where it was a Rashford touch that went a bit skew with. But I can't. I can't help but focus on that. I cannot help but focus on that. This is the Premier League, man. How? Why is it that VAR is a selective... I oh, am yeah, that. You know what? Nah. I'm not going to use it this time. What? How? Why does that choice exist? The VAR is there to look at... what is, I don't even know what the damn rules are. And I suppose that's the biggest problem, right? But... Eric Ten Hag will be walking away from that furious at the referee, furious with the decisions that went against United. But as I said, if I'm looking at a positive perspective, we showed a different sort of resilience there today. Up against 11 men with 10 for 60 minutes and we held out. We kept a clean sheet. We kept going and going and going. And we weren't at our best today. And you might say that's two points dropped. I think in the grand scheme of that game, I wouldn't say Ten Hag is happy with that draw, but I think he'll be happy with the resilience that, that, that we dug deep. We had to dig deep. And we're going to have to dig deep in these next four games now without Casemiro. This man here, McTominay, has got to step up, man. Step up. We all keep talking about how Man United are a different looking team with and without Casemiro. And we've now got to deal with that for the next four games because in my opinion, I don't think that Manchester United will appeal that red card, even if I wholeheartedly disagree with the fact that it was a red card. I think just uh, because if you use those slow-mos and, and that's what they will do, they'll use the, the individual screen grabs from VAR and go, well, that's a red card. Ten Hag can't say it. I can. The shambles. That was Anthony Taylor in that, in that disgusting. It's just, it just annoys you. Just, that's, that's the main feeling at the end. Of it. I'm just left annoyed. That we're talking about the ref. And I've spent so much time talking about the ref. Should be talking about a football. 